It's been so many digital avatars of me just floating around, so sometimes technology doesn't always catch up with all of us. And that's going to be my first question to you, actually. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to talk about artificial intelligence, Manish. And you've been doing some fascinating work for Google in India with their research labs. Not a lot of people know about, everyone talks about, like in our previous session, about some of the big tech titans coming from India. But a lot of that research and core work in terms of AI is happening here in Bangalore. You've got to tell us a little bit about the work that you do at Google and how much of it really contributes towards Google Bard, the real contender rival to ChatGPT. So, um, so we are doing, ours is a relatively young lab. We started less than four years ago uh, and pretty much uh, the entire team was built from scratch. Uh, but again, we had this very intense focus on both making foundational contributions to AI as well as applying it to solve big problems, um, especially those that are inspired by the Indian context. So it includes work on, I mean, one of the things that we really wanted to do was to democratize access to information. Uh, it's very nice for those of us in this audience, you and me, who understand English, we have information at our fingertips. What about, let's say, that farmer's daughter in Haryana or the laborer's yeah. uh, son in Chhattisgarh? How do you level the playing field for them, get them access to information, again, in their native language? Uh, so our team has been taking the lead on building these multilingual models, uh, which in a single model will provide support. Initially, we released a model which provided support for 16 Indian languages. It was used in the Google Assistant product as well as made available to the researchers and practitioners to now working on a, a, a model which will support over 100 Indian languages. We are collecting speech samples from 773 districts of India in partnership with Indian Institute of Science. And already, some of these models are beginning to make their way into kind of some of these Google, not just existing products like Assistant, but also upcoming uh, products like Bard uh, that we have been working closely with those teams to improve their capability to understand and respond in Indian languages. Because Manish, the potential for Google to really be a game changer, disruptor in this space is immense. When we talk about other chatbots, a lot of their data sets are restricted to 2021 or 2022. Google Bard, with Google's repository of search data, can give you answers in real time. We'll, we'll touch upon that in a bit. But I also want to allude to what Romesh Vadwani, who had joined us earlier at the Tech Today Congress, virtually, of course, he mentioned this concept of AI for social good. And from your first point, I think we can segue into that. How much can Google really leverage its, its expertise, its research, and its understanding of AI to look at solving problems for the underserved. Absolutely. So we believe, again, AI has this enormous potential to benefit uh, humanity. Uh, and, and, and which was why one of our very clear focus right from the day one of inception of the lab was to apply, develop AI in a manner that brings the benefits to the underprivileged. So, in the so right uh, when we started the lab, we in fact uh, organized a workshops where we invited dozens of nonprofits and academic groups to come together and start identifying problems that they were grappling with. And we initially funded six of those efforts, and in the following year, another thirty efforts. It has already led to some very, very significant, uh, impactful work. One example would be our work with a nonprofit called Arman, which is, uh, which runs these programs to improve the uh, health of expecting mothers and their babies within the first year of their lives. Uh, they found that these helpful tips that they deliver. Uh, in, during every week of the pregnancy and during the first year of the child's uh, life results in measurable improvements in outcomes both for these mothers as well as their babies. Uh, and yet, so many of these mothers end up dropping out of that program. So they pose this problem to us, can you use AI 
to help us predict who are at the risk of dropping out and with the very few human volunteers that we have can you because we have thousands and in fact now lakhs of women enrolled in the program at any given point in time with the few human volunteers who are the most important women that they should reach out to to keep them engaged and this ai model has actually been deployed in production and it's already uh, we have done conducted rigorous studies that show the benefits of this model in in keeping these uh, mothers engaged and which is leading to improved uh, outcomes for themselves as their babies when you look at the pace of innovation in the world of ai it is not rapid i'd call it frantic and in that sense when we speak about something this week maybe next week it could sound a bit dated given some new thing that's happened in the world of ai but another theme that's really erupting in the technology world is responsible ai right as these language learning models get smarter and smarter there is there's an onus on tech companies to really ensure transparency accountability and approach this responsibly what do you think absolutely so google in fact in 2018 came out with this set of principles for responsible ai which uh, we have been really strictly adhering to in all of our both research products projects as well as development of products these responsible ai principles both talked about what we will not do we will not apply ai to cause harm to humans start developing weapons uh, and Uh, engage in surveillance and so on to also how we would develop ai in a manner that uh, enhances the safety that does not perpetuate biases so right from the life cycle of an ai project to using data sets we have been for instance uh, creating these uh, methodologies and best practices for how to make sure your data sets themselves are diverse and in fact making a lot of these tools available to even other practitioners uh, so that they can in turn make their ai models uh, fairer uh, so so that was kind of i guess several years ago right which was ages ago in this world of ai with all of these amazing advances that we are seeing in generative ai one of the things again we are espousing is this combination of being bold as well as responsible because on one hand these generative ai technologies have this enormous potential right to 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 be amplify our human creativity our potential our ability to write kind of really wonderful documents even if we don't have a very good command of the language to beautiful presentations to small businesses being able to create uh uh amazing ads that help them uh attract more customers but but at the same time that potential right to create malicious deep fakes to create misinformation so it is really is important right for us to develop these technologies in a manner that is uh responsible uh and and we are also calling out for the government to take the lead on on coming out with regulations that really amplify the positives uh, of ai the potential for ai to really improve human lives while really uh, clamping down right while really being able to control the harmful effects of ai which are very possible with the kind of advanced technology uh, which we are continuing to develop and which is just advancing at an amazing pace Manish now that we warmed you up I have to address the hottest topic of 2023 Sundar Pichai at Google IO made a bunch of announcements the word artificial intelligence featured right up there I think 143 149 times because that is Google's commitment towards AI and the real embodiment for the end consumer some people think is Google bard but I'm guessing you could correct me and anyone who had that thought process saying it's also the ecosystem of devices google assistant is on every android device right that's why i say that you know google has a disruptive potential in terms of what they can do with bard maybe in stock android in a pixel device 
tell me a little bit more about Google Bard, and, and we can also tell our audience about it. And I'm sure Manish is not going to talk about it, but I honestly think, like I said earlier, that Google Bard will be a game changer, even in places where chat GPT has not managed to find success yet. Over to you, Manish. Yeah, so we have been uh, both kind of coming out with things like Bard, uh, which engages in a conversational manner with the, with the user. And, and, and again, in a manner that, that, again, can really both provide extremely useful information, as well as avoid some of the potential for harm in the form of, again, hallucinations, making up, making up facts, and so on. And one of the things that Google has already started doing is to integrate some of these capabilities with the traditional strength in search. And so, in fact, uh, at the Google I.O. event, again, you saw also saw some new advances in kind of Google search. Uh, in, in how we now start providing all of this information, but grounded in real facts. Uh, and, and again, presenting some of that information from a variety of websites in a very concise and, and understandable manner, and being able to then take that conversation forward, right, from, from the previous query to the next follow-on query and so on. And increasingly, you're going to see, again, these these capabilities get richer. Um, we are starting with text-based interfaces, and very soon, right, you'll find not just Google, pretty much the entire industry, also moving to multimodal uh, forms of input and output, where already we know in India, right, a lot of people are much more comfortable um, uh, asking for information through voice um, rather than typing. Uh, and, and also we tend to be both people in India even the Generation Z, right, in the U.S., um, often prefers visually rich information, right, rather than only text information. So you're going to see a lot more, uh, I would say, further advances in the capabilities of all these models to really provide both rich information and delightful experience to the users. It's interesting, a tech visionary like Bill Gates recently said that the winner in this AI race that we've been speaking of, the AI revolution that everyone's spoken so fondly of, will be the tech company that cracks the personal or digital assistance space. Now, what I find fascinating, Manish, from your last answer, is that India could be really the right sort of testing ground for something like this in, in terms of it being conversational AI, because I've noticed comparing BART to a lot of other uh, you know, chatbots out there, that the conversational nature of it really gives it a cutting edge. Is that the future, according to you, generally, for the field of AI, to, to develop a strong conversational product? Uh, so, first of all, at least, I mean, Bill Gates is an amazing uh, visionary and successful. Um, I wouldn't put myself anywhere close to. But I would say the real winner, in my view, is ultimately going to be the user. Uh, who will benefit from all of these enormous capabilities, right, in, in enriching their own lives. So in my view, yes, one of the very important kind of ways in which we will uh, benefit from AI is to have these very intelligent kind of assistants, uh, which, would be, which would be around to assist us in various aspects of, of, of our lives, right? It could be in giving us access to information. It could be in helping us learn more effectively. It could be helping us lead healthier lives because we also know, right, so, many, so much of the burden of disease today in the world is lifestyle diseases, which can in fact be warded off and, and kind of significantly uh, addressed through simple lifestyle changes. Uh, so I believe, yes, I mean, a, a very significant part, I mean, I do not look at that as the only thing because there's also the scientist in me that, that feels that humanity is also going to benefit from AI-accelerated uh, science, that I think we will be able to make fundamental, uh, fundamentally accelerate our ability to accelerate scientific discoveries. We've already shown glimpses of that, right, through the work done by my colleagues at DeepMind 
on protein folding, uh, which has been like long considered a very, very tough problem. And, and they came and through this AI-based approach, essentially solved that problem. And they made uh, protein structure for 200 million proteins in the, uh, known, to the, uh, known to humanity. They uh, made AI-based predictions of those 200 million proteins available for free for the research community, for the pharmaceuticals and so on to use, uh, which would have estimated, I mean, each protein structure uh, 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 is, 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 is today takes about five years of PhD time to, to develop. And so 200 million years of PhD time was, was just kind of done, right? So in my view, it's also things like that which will accelerate scientific discovery, I mean, at least I certainly am excited about a, a future where AI helps us as scientists, right, kind of do discoveries, right, which are the equivalent of a million papers, perhaps in a given year. It's very reassuring to know that the AI revolution is here and it's in the able hands of scientists like Dr. Manish Gupta that we are entrusting this particular movement to. Thank you so much. It's been an insightful session. And thank you so much for putting some deep tech into the inaugural session, inaugural rendition of the Tech Today Congress. You've been a lovely audience, and you've been an absolutely amazing guest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ayush.